Welcome to Beyond the Blockchain. I'm so excited to speak to you. Harry Ye, you are the founder and managing partner of Quantum FinTech Group. It's a cryptocurrency hedge fund for high net worth investors. I am not there yet. I am not a high net worth investor yet, but that is the goal. That is the dream. Um, so hopefully you can share some secrets on uh, how to get there. Welcome. I'd love to. Thanks for having me on the show. So, so tell me about how you first got into this. I, you read an article, I think, about Bitcoin and you decided there's something here? Yeah, so I got my first Bitcoin back in 2013. One of my friends had published an article on Facebook and I guess it referenced Forbes and I was like, what is Bitcoin? And Bitcoin, I think, was $60 back then. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Once I received my first Bitcoin, I was completely hooked. Really? Mm-hmm. So... For all of the naysayers out there and those who are um, still <laughs> either on the fence or suspect of Bitcoin, in your opinion, do you believe that cryptocurrency is definitely here to stay? It's the future or maybe we still have some kinks to work out? We're definitely past the point now where cryptocurrency, um, there's a lot of uncertainty whether or not it would survive. We're entering what I call the super cycle, which means that cryptocurrency is going to become mainstream. It's going to become a staple and part of our lives. And the blockchain now is extremely mature. I mean, you have projects like Phantom, mm -hmm. which is uh, the faster versions um, that run ERC-20 contracts uh, that Ethereum produced with Solidity. So you can use a lot of the, the, the biggest innovation um, since 2017 is probably smart contracts because now you can run tokenized um, systems on top of these blockchains. So Ethereum allowed you to do about 15 transactions per second, and now you can do about 450 transactions per second on Phantom. So if I want to send you US dollar, I can send you US dollar without using banks or intermediaries 24 hours a day, seven days a week directly to your wallet using um, Phantom and, and USDC, my and like Tether. Um, to understand the difference, let's say, between an Ethereum and Phantom, the difference between the blockchains, do you see it coming down to one specific blockchain that'll just be built bigger and faster than the rest and win out? Or do you see people using different blockchains for different purposes? People will definitely be using uh, multiple blockchains, just the same way, um, you know, there's Amazon, Google, um, and Microsoft Azure when you use cloud computing services. Mm. There's different databases such as SQL Server, MongoDB, and uh, Postgres and MySQL. Think of each blockchain as an indep independent data store. They're just run differently. So the reality is we need almost all the blockchains out there, Cardano, Phantom, Avalanche, Binance Smart Chain, Ethereum, Bitcoin. They all do something very, very different, uh, Solana. Solana. Um, and what's happening is we're creating bridges and cross chain so that if one asset is on one chain, it can go to another chain. And so you are really, you're all in on Phantom. Um, you've been, you know, pr promoting it since you discovered it back in um, 2019. What makes Phantom so different and why do you love it? Sure. So I think uh, in order to kind of understand how Phantom works, uh, let's back up a little bit and we'll talk a little bit about the different ways consensus works on on, on uh, cryptocurrency and blockchains. So the first thing to understand is that Bitcoin uses what's called proof of work, which means, you know, you run a program on your computer called CG Miner. Every, every 10 minutes, a block is verified. If you're part of a mining pool, you will get free Bitcoins and part of the transaction fees. But it's a very, very slow system because if you have computers all over the world, they all have to talk to each other and it takes a long time for consensus to be reached. So that's called proof of work. Now, if Ethereum, what they did that was very, very innovative is they created a JavaScript based system that allowed developers to create what's called smart contracts in a language called Solidity. And they built it on top of Ethereum's blockchain. But the problem is Ethereum's blockchain at, the, at that time, when it was created in 2014, and announced, uh, I think it, the first uh, mining was 2015, they didn't have delegated proof of stake yet. It was still proof of work. Mm -hmm. So you've got this amazing um, piece of uh, engineering marvel, one of the best inventions you know, in the world, like uh, hats off to Vitalik for creating this. Yeah. But the problem was, it's almost kind of like if you had have a very, very fast Lamborghini, but the engine, it's not a hybrid electric engine yet. So it was still an older gasoline gasoline engine, but now we're in the age of hybrid electric and potentially electric. So I would I would like to say that, you know, Bitcoin, you could say is kind of like a gasoline 
gasoline vehicle. Ethereum is uh, the hybrid electric okay. and Phantom would be like the full electric car. I love like, that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good way to look at it. Terrific. And even uh, energy wise, Phantom uses delegated proof of stake. So it's essentially Ethereum, but because it uses the delegated stake, uh, proof of stake protocol and it runs um, something called uh, DAG, which is a directed acyclic graph, which means that as more transactions go on the blockchains, more blocks get uh, created. Uh, so it actually becomes faster in terms of processing transactions. Very, very innovative. So when I saw what Andre Cronier, uh, Michael Kong, these guys were developing, and Andre released uh, YFI, which is Urine Finance, which is essentially the kind of the first yield farming where if, you have, if I have US dollar and I put it on a on a smart contract, I earn, you know, rewards. So when I saw that Andre was doing this and, you know, previously they had launched Phantom first, I said, aha, I know what you guys are doing. And that's when I went all in about Phantom. And I, you know, I, I got into Block One, EOS, Cardano, Cosmos, uh, all great blockchains. But I knew for me as an entrepreneur, even as an investor, I was going to hyper focus. So that's literally when I went all in on Phantom and I was telling everybody this blockchain it's the most undervalued blockchain in the, right. in the world, even to this day. Yeah, and it's it's shot up. I mean, it's been one of the best performing and mm -hmm. it's cracked through the top 100 pretty quickly. Yeah, our hedge fund, um, if you had put $250,000 in back in um, 2020 in April, it's worth $56 million right now. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh yeah. my God, I just had a coronary event. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But isn't that the the allure really of crypto is that there won't be one central company, tech company, government that's controlling it? You want to try to balance between the two, because if you're a new user and you come into DeFi and you lose all your money right away, you're going to be so turned off by it. Yeah. And you're just yeah. going to think it's the technology. But the reality, it's because it is the wild, wild west right now. I mean, you heard there was a three hundred twenty million dollar hack on hack. Ethereum. Yeah. Right. It's That's these kind of things and, that and it scares them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just even the companies, you can bankrupt an entire company because of just this one thing. So by having these safe zones that are kind of designated, if you want to be a part of it, great. If you don't want to go, kind of go outside, you know, at, at least if there's accountability, if somebody steals or takes from you, there's a you know, people would be less likely to do it because they you know lawyers and lawsuits and everything are involved online right now in DeFi. I'm the first person to say, yes, we're going to come after you. This is why we set up Mosaic Cyber so that if, if you steal from people, on, anonymous, even in, in our areas, we're going to come find you and we're going to help, you know, have you held accountable. Uh, Harry, Ye, thank you so much for joining me and explaining just a, a tiny bit of, uh, of what you do and what you're involved in. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. <laughs>